one of my passions is black and white. I think uh, a lot of you do know it. And one of the, some of the reasons are, um, it's a way to photograph without really taking color into you know consideration and and being um, kind of uh, distracted by it. Um, we understand uh, we can learn a little bit about lighting and contrast, and a way to really um, get your creativity going in a in a in a different direction if you're not shooting black and uh, black and white. Um, just a few, you'll see some examples of uh, some of the things that I do. I love, the, I shoot a lot of street uh, street photography, so you you know be able to see some of the things that I do out on the uh, on the street. Love to be there. Um, it's been a it's great now that we're shooting digital because uh, we have the opportunity now to well I don't know if it's good but it it's there it's available to shoot a lot of stuff. Years ago, you know, we used to press the shutter. It was a dollar every time we pushed that shutter. Now it's like, you know, it's five minutes because we're always, uh, you know, post-processing and, and looking at all our images. So one of the things that I'm, I, I have to preach is, please, if you want to shoot uh, black and white, shoot it in color. So this is where you have the color information. I Most of you probably know that already. But um, if you don't and you're shooting JPEG, you know, when you get back, you're not you're not going to have any uh, way to use the the color as we used to do years ago with the color filters. So uh, please make sure you're shooting in black and white. Always look for shapes and tones. The cool stuff out there. Um, can it look? Will it look nice in, in color? Probably. But uh, again, well, when I translate it into black and white, it uh, less distractions and it really uh, gets me more focused into uh, to shapes and things like that. It's a good time to go out and shoot if you're talking about trying to see in black and white, although now we have a Polaroid right in the back of our digital camera, which is cool. Years ago, uh, you know, when we're shooting with uh, analog film, we we could guess or we had a Polaroid back and stuff like that. But now you can actually see what you got. I shoot um, my my camera is always in uh, in black and white mode. I just prefer to, to work that way, even if I'm looking at a color scene, it just gives me uh, a better uh, point of view of what what I'm looking at and what I'm going to end up with. So when it's when it's overcast, something like this, you're actually seeing in monochromatic uh, tones. So it's really a good way to understand black and white. Getting up early in the morning, great time to shoot. Um, yep, if you want to share these images with uh, with friends and and other people, or even sell your images, you, know, you got to get up and and uh, I'm not a, really an early morning person but sometimes it really brings some uh some great images as, as well as later on at night um we talked about uh before about manhattan a place i love as a matter of fact uh, right by that flat flat iron build, building i used to work there for uh 14 years i i was a driver for united parcel and that street 23rd street is where i used to uh where my route was Pre-visualizing is, is something that is really important. Um, you might have heard of uh, like an Ansel Adams. I'm far from being an Ansel Adams, but he was able to take it, take an image and just go berserk with it because his his magic, not I mean, he went out with, with a mule and 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 uh you know eight by ten cameras or four by five cameras. He worked for it, but his magic was in the dark room, and he was able to uh, come out with images that were just unbelievable. So you want to try to pre-visualize why, why you might want to convert it into black and white. Um, flowers, you know, lots of, lots of us will be shooting in color because they're so vibrant and beautiful, and I take it some, and I do shoot in color as well, but I like to take it and look at it another way, not color, but more of, of shapes and, and tones. Um, beautiful sunrise, uh, and it, I love it in color. And then when we go and start putting it into a black and white, it just, it does, uh, simplify it. And now we're not even thinking about, you know, anything about colors. We're just looking, uh, again, you could like both images and I do, but, uh, I'm just trying to show you how black and white will, how it would look once it's uh, processed in black and white. It has a completely different feel to it. Great time to shoot overcast. Um, and when I when I go out and shoot buildings, uh, I look like a tourist. So I've been in these places, you know, Manhattan. I grew uh, grew up in Brooklyn and worked in Manhattan for many years. 
but I'm like a tourist. My head is always up in the air looking at some great uh, architectural uh, designs. They're all over the place. Look for them. Very simple. Uh, again, this, this is just about form, texture, uh, leading lines. It has nothing to do with color. And we can appreciate just the, uh, the texture of, of the black and white. And just like color, we're always looking for, uh, we're not out there just to shoot because you have nothing better to do. We're, we're trying to get an image that that uh, we can uh, learn from. And, and whoever's watching, uh, looking at my image, I, I want them to go to places that I feel this image needs to go to. So here we have leading lines. We have uh, this person. Well, I, all I had to do was wait for this person to get into this image. I'm very low, so you can't see behind her. So this, these are stairs that she's going to come down. Long lens, compress, and uh, like I said, just waited for somebody to come into that into that uh, area to photograph. Unique lighting. Uh, if a lot of people don't want to uh, photograph in sunny days, I find it to be um, a great time. If you want to come up with shadows and things like that, it's a good time to get your uh, camera out there and photograph. Leading lines is always something I'm looking at here. We have, again, some beautiful architectural designs um, to its uh, a simplis simplistic look to it. Uh, nothing uh, um, to distract. Of course, we you know we know that oblique lighting, uh, uh, lighting comes from the side and things like that will bring out more uh, dimension, more texture, a uh, 3D like, a uh, 3D look that we're looking for. Um, and sometimes, we forget about that. You know, we're shooting on a two-dimensional uh, uh, plane, and we need to find something that will help bring in uh, uh, another dimension. One of the things I find about uh, uh, I find a lot of people when they're photographing um, black and whites is that it kind of falls short sometimes, and sometimes it's, it's as simple as just getting your black black uh, point and your white point. You can at least start with that. Make sure that you're using the whole dynamic range when you're photographing uh, uh, your scenes. So look at your histogram. I really rely on my histogram all the time. It's up on the in my camera. I want to make sure that I, I understand it. Hopefully everybody understands their histogram. Um, it doesn't mean that your histogram is going to look perfect like the one on the bottom right. It really, but... Try and use as much um, tonality if you possibly can. If we're photographing a, 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 a white polar bear in the snow, we're not, we're not going to have anything on the left-hand side, and that's okay. You don't have to get bent out of shape. It's all good. And the same thing if, you know, you got a black bear in a, in a, you know, uh, in a cave, if you're going to have most of your information is going to be on the left-hand side. So when, when I'm saying a, a good histogram, uh, try to get as much information as you uh, possibly can. So uh, it can be very timeless uh, as far as black and white is concerned. It uh, gives you a nice, can be an artistic feel. To me, it's very classic, elegant, and dramatic. Uh, this this is the Flemington train. Uh, Flemington uh, uh, Liberty Village, is. Uh, this is right by my house, uh, a place that they're tearing down after many, many years where they used to bus people in. And uh, this train still comes in a couple of times a week. It, it doesn't travel too far, probably goes about... I don't know, maybe four miles back and forth, but uh, um, people get on there and they can, you know, have a little party on the on the train. Here is a uh, an example of this photograph, um, which I, I I really like a lot. It tells a, a a tremendous story, but if we look at it in black and white, it really has a different feel to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it side by side so you guys can see what I'm talking about. As we look at the color, I mean, it, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic. But my eye keeps going to the her, the red uh, quilt or you know uh, what, whatever she's sitting on the um, uh, sheet. Whereas on the right hand side, uh, we go right to her face. We can't help but go right because she. We're looking at contrast. That shirt, uh, the blouse that she's wearing is the brightest thing. And that's where our eyes go. I normally don't like to retouch when I do outdoors, something like this, but I did remove that uh, little H&M on the, on the side there. It just distracted me. Uh, black and white is great when you're photographing people. Uh, well, I should say uh, like models, or if you want the skin to be a little bit softer, we have a lot of red in our face and black and white is very sensitive to, uh, to the reds. 
and it kind of does our own uh, retouching without even doing anything. We can get a little bit artistic. I've uh, been to Cuba, uh, and it's a wonderful place to photograph black and white, although they have some crazy stuff there in color. Um, most, a lot of my work has been turned into black, post-processed into black and white. Here's another one from Cuba. Uh, my roots are Brooklyn. I uh, love Coney Island. Uh, every time I get back into Brooklyn, I, I go down there. Um, it gives me a, a, an adrenaline push for me to go back to my to the roots. Uh, some good memories, some maybe not so pleasant memories, but still uh, memories from my childhood. So I try to photograph every time uh, I get into Brooklyn. And you want to tell, uh, there's always a story behind them. This, I'm going to be real quick. The one in the middle was a fun, this was uh, on 6th Avenue in Manhattan. And I will chase people down to photograph them because I, I find her to be so intriguing. And she has a lot of makeup on her face, as you can see. She she is an actress. And I ran over to her and, uh, she, and I asked her for just a few minutes. I said, I'd love to photograph you. And she had no problem with it. And then I said, I guess you, you must be going to work. She goes, no, no. She goes, I'm going to the theater. And she opened up her bag and that's popcorn. Uh, and she's ready to go to the theater. So there's a lot of cool stories uh, um, while we're out there photographing. Um, being at the right place at the right time, sometimes uh, you just get lucky and you are. Here's the sand uh, sand blow, uh, being blown uh, across the boardwalk in, uh, in Coney Island. Great for abstracts. Uh, there's uh, simple things. Um, look for them. The one on the left really caught my eye. That was a stone wall, but it almost, to me, it has a, um, it reminds me of, uh, the face of Jesus. You can see the thorns on the top. You can almost see the beard and, and the face in the middle there. And that's, that's what I got out of that, uh, that image. Yeah. Something so simple as still life. Uh, you can add a little color to it. As you can see on the, on the left, I added a little, uh, blue tone to it. So it doesn't have to be stark black and white. There's duo tones, there's tritones, there's all kinds of cool stuff. You can, uh, <clears throat> you could add to it. It is tremendous. It's classic Remington. That's before we had uh, computers and God, if none of you have worked on a typewriter from years way back, uh, you're missing an experience. That's for sure. So we've captured it. What do we do after we capture it? We go, for me, most of my work is done in, in Lightroom, although Camera Roar uh, is just as good. As a matter of fact, same engine. And like I said before, um, that's when we start trying to correct our color. And it sounds silly because it's going to black and white, but I want the most color I can possibly get so I can get a better black and white. And I'm sure most of you know with some of these third-party plugins. They're great. Uh, although Lightroom has come a long way, they're, they're really getting more advanced, especially their masking. And I don't know if uh, you've seen their new denoise. It's wonderful. It really does a, a nice job. Um, so do you have to use a third-party plugin? Not necessarily. It really depends on how you want to simplify, simplify your life and or how much black and white you're actually doing. So don't use, you know, grayscale in, in, in uh, Photoshop because you're not, it's just getting a, a, a neutral uh, black and white and it really has no, no uh, contrast and anything else in it. If you, if you don't want to use a third party plugin, by all means use the adjustment laser. At least you have those sliders and that's why we say we should be um, adjusting a color image. Those sliders will uh, uh, reflect how your, your color images will look, uh, the, your color part of your image will look. And then of course, if you wanna go a little bit more and you're doing a lot of black and white, you may wanna look at 30, third party plugins. Grayscale, and then coming in and using, I, I, I really like exposure, um, set, uh, exposure uh, that's part of alien skin. Although I, I also love, um, Nick, uh, silver, uh, silver effects. Wonderful. They're both, they're both great. The problem with it is there's so many, so many choices out there. It makes you crazy. And uh, you spend so much time fiddling around with, uh, looking at different, uh, presets that you, you never get anything done. So try to find something that, <coughs> excuse me, that you, that you're happy with and stick with it and try not to, uh, go too crazy. Just something really simple. 
um, and just shapes and forms uh, when you when you go just real easy. That's what you're going to get if you can start playing around with the not only color part of your information, but also start moving in with uh, um, contrast and curves and things like that. And we're going to talk about that in a sec. Once again, uh, should you buy them? Should you use them? That's something that you're going to have to decide on yourself. Um, I find them to be invaluable. And here's a, some, of, you know, some of the reasons are, uh, first of all, their algorithms are superior to what else, uh, some of the other things that they can do. Like Photoshop is great, but these programs are made specifically for uh, for black and white and they, they get it down. It's really great. And of course, you know, lots of uh, toning edges, all those good, good things you could add after the uh, fact. Okay, um, Bethlehem. I don't know if you've gone to Bethlehem Steel. It's a great place to go photograph. Hopefully, maybe we can actually make a trip there. Um, so both images I really like, but um, I have the black and white hanging on my wall, and it, it really, you know what? It's it's just like if you send uh, your image to one lab and uh, or to two different labs, and you come back and they look, they, you know, you say, I really like this one better. That's because you're seeing both of them together. <laughs> if you're seeing one at a time, you, you'll probably like both of them. So that's that's the way I, I think. And real quick, so by now, now that I got through this pretty quickly, I think uh, we're all missing the boat if we're not putting our images on print. Um, everybody's, we're shooting so many things now. Everything's been left on our computers or on our phones. It would be nice to share them with other people. These are, as you can see, a uh, uh, probably a little bit bigger than most people want to print. But, uh, you know, when I do displays, I, I actually um, donated this to uh, a Haitian um, foundation so uh, they can show it at their, you know, whatever presentations they might be having. But uh, get it on print. It's so such, it's much more powerful. Um, oh, so you thought I did animals. I love animals. Uh, get out there, photograph them. They're fun. They're fun to photograph as well. And I think, man, keep shooting, keep sharing. Yes. How was that? That was pretty quick. Uh, Andrea, you can put on you can put on the um, unmute everybody, please. Everybody hear me? Everybody. No. Cool. That that was going through it very quickly. And um, any questions on on what we just talked about now? Before I kind of get into the post-processing part of it. Anything? Eula, anyone? Anyone? So Jim, what what um, uh, plugins do you find that you use the most? Um, I use uh, Exposure. And the second I would probably say is uh, Silver Effects. Although you can get really good results in Lightroom, and I'm going to just do it for you as uh, when we move on. Uh, like I said, they've come uh, they've come uh, a long way, and they're getting much much better. But uh, layers, I mean, you got to have layers, otherwise you just you know you're going around in circles. And and I got better control when I get into Photoshop. You know, I'm working on a tablet. I, there's so much you can do in Lightroom, and it's too tedious and it's too time consuming. So um, <clears throat> that's why I use third party plugins. So those plugins, Jim, are for Lightroom. I'm sorry. They can be they can be used through Lightroom as well. Right. But um, my Lightroom, and I'm on a different computer. I'm on a laptop now. But my my Lightroom only has my raw files in it. I don't I don't start bringing in everything that I've worked on. That's in a separate hard drive. And the reason being, I want to keep Lightroom as my database. I don't I don't want to have to look for my image. You know worked on images or working files in Lightroom. That's not where, for me, they belong. I need them on a separate drive altogether. So my Lightroom runs nice and lean. Um, it's a database. So if you guys are thinking, you know, well, I could use um, Camera Raw. Sure, you can. Camera, Camera Raw is not, is, um, is not a, a database. In other words, it's, uh, you can see, you can see all your images on, on uh, through Bridge. So, I don't want, and uh, the only way you can see your images in Lightroom is if you import them in there. And then you have keywording, something that I, I strongly recommend. Um, this way you can find your images uh, from, you know, eight years ago. If you want to find uh, somebody on a beach with a red hat, 
I and they're keyworded. I you know got seventy thousand images in my in my Lightroom. Well, it, it'll take honestly, it'll take about four seconds to find that image. That's that's why keywording is so very important. Okay. Um, okay, so let me let me get this out of the way. Get out of here. Let's go down to. Hold on one second. Got this little stupid thing in the way. Uh, Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Again, I, I don't use this for, uh, this is not my working uh, computer, so, but I, I just wanted to put this presentation in here. Lightroom, uh, if you don't use it, um, it, it's pretty much like some of the other, uh, uh, it's not a browser. That's what, that's the word I was looking for before. It's not like um, uh, Bridge. Bridge. Bridge is a browser. So it look, you can see everything on your, on, on your computer. This thing will not, if, you know, if it, I didn't import it, it has no clue where it is. So that's the difference. Um, so let's, let's just go into this guy here. This is a color. Uh, this is the, the image when it was first taken. And I'm in, uh, in the de development module right now, as you can see up here. Let me see if I can move this down so I can see it. So right up here, you see development. And this is where you, you would do your developing. This, this image was shot very quickly. And that's why it's a little bit underexposed because um, it's probably looking at the light up in the sky. First thing I do, some of them, some of these uh, cameras already have built in um, lens correction some of them don't so the first thing i normally do is go into my trans uh lens correction and make sure that i enable profile and this one's not finding it so i just go in there and, and i look for it i go to fuji and and it, it found it. it it said uh it's the x100 so most of them you're going to see will already be available it, it might even be checked my new cameras are all checked in there i don't have to do it but you should uh, you should put uh, enable your profile on that. The next thing I would probably do is just go into transform. If it's a little skewed and it is, I would just try auto. It that straightened it out, but you can see the white line around it. So I'm just going to constrain the crop, and now we have um, at least it's straightened out now. And if you you come in here real quick, you can see that it's uh, uh, it comes one to one once I click on my spacebar and I go back. Uh, just to, so I could show you uh, the new features, uh, the new masking features in Lightroom. Uh, let's just go right on this little circle here. If you click on it, it will give you some options. Uh, you can do linear gradients. You can do uh, uh, radials. You can do um, use a brush and painting areas. And they have some areas here where you can just click on the sky. So if I click on that, Let me see if the mask is oh let me see something. Yeah. Where's my little thingy when you hold on there? <laughs> it's hard to see. Sometimes it gets stupid and it doesn't bring down the masking, but you can see what happens. So you can see that it, it turned, you see the mask coming on in the background there. If I wanted to add to it, I can't find the window. So hold on. So Let's look at here. So if I wanted to add to this, it, it didn't get the whole sky. All I have to do is to go plus. Um, no, I'm sorry. So right here, I go add. And I'll say, what do you want to use? I'm just going to use a brush. I just come in here and just brush this here. I don't have to be really careful. I just want to demonstrate how this thing works. So once the sky is selected, at this point now, I can go into my exposure, if I want it, or my highlights, I can, and you can see, I can go from, start bringing it down, bringing some uh, some of the detail back. I'll go to the extreme, just so you can see what you're doing. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that, but you can bring some of that, some of that back in there. And what's really cool about this is, so once I got that, I can also go in here and, and select a, a, a subject, but you can also, I'm going to hold down the control key and click on, on my mask, and I'm going to, duplicate it and invert it so what's that that's going to do pick everything else but the sky so here i'm going to bring up my shadows because i was underexposed so i'm just popping up the shadows as you can see there i'm probably going to bring down a little bit of the highlights 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna get my black point. Um, I'm sorry, not yet. So my shadows that we're in, I'm gonna return back into regular um, Lightroom right now. So I go to my basics, and here we still have everything we had before, but I'm not in the mask anymore. I'm on now. It's going to be the whole the whole image. So just to show you, if I want to the high, you know exposure, that's what it's going to do. So again, I can probably bring down more of the the highlights, and just like you saw right here, um, I'm also going to bring up the shadows a little bit more. And this is for black and white. I'm looking at my histogram to see if I make sure that I have everything covered. If you hold down your um, your control key and click on your black, uh, I'm sorry, your rapture key and click on your, your black pointer and you drag it to the left, the first thing that pops up is going to be the darkest, well, it's not here. It's taking time to catch up. But if you can see the blackest point, let me see if I can do that again. It's not showing up. It's not catching up, but it should show you the blackest point. But in any event, look at my histogram. I don't want to clip it. Just want to go to my blackest point. Same thing with my whites. See, there you go. So I'm holding down the uh, option key. If I go all the way to the right, you can see what's clipping. So I'm coming back. So it's not clipping. Right about there is my white point has been set. I'm ready to go. So now I could go out to um, to uh, Photoshop and do it. But I, let's do one right here in, in uh, Lightroom. Click on black and white. And it turns into a regular black and white. Down in here under black and white, there, there are your color filters. So let's just say, uh, let's take yellows. You can see what it does to the steps. And that's why you should be shooting in, in color. So now I control some different areas. Um, let's turn on the, the blues. You can see he's got blue jeans on. So the, uh, the blue in his pants and also around his, uh, his uh, sweatshirt come up. And again, I'm looking at the histogram. Look at the yellows. I like I like the yellows down a little bit. Let's see what we have in the oranges. Look at his hand and the face. Remember I said before, there's a lot of red in our skin. And I'm just going to pop that up a little bit. Let me see if I get a little closer, if you can see it. So if I take this red, I'm sorry, take the orange down and up, you can see what it does to the skin. So we want to come in somewhere in the middle there. I'm going to back up a little bit because I like to see the whole scene. Let's go back to that. Uh, mask and here I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to use a uh, linear so you can take your linear tool and just drag it down here and see if you can get a little more detail in the sky so I'm just going to come down just a little bit I don't want to make it look too silly and I would, I'd be happy with that because I would be going out to uh, to Photoshop now so but let me just show you one thing before I do that Let's take it off of black and white and go to color. So it's not a bad color image. Okay, so this is, let me see, I can't even get back to the beginning. I'm sorry. So, um, well, let me go down here and see if I could go to where we started. F12. Uh, uh, I don't know if that'll work on this one. So let me go down here. Uh, where are you? Um, okay. Nope. It's not in there. Anyway, you, you could see that it's a better color image just by me working on it in black and white. I was able now to get it, uh, to look pretty decent in color. So let's just say I'm happy with that. And I know it, I would clap my hands and now I would just export it out to Photoshop. And here is the export, uh, file. And what I normally would do is I would bring it out as not an, as an original, but now I'm going to work on it. I'm going to bring it out as a TIFF. It's going to be in photo, uh, Pro Photo uh, RGB. And also um, make sure you don't have this checked off because then it'll, it'll come in whatever pixels you have. It. So keep this off. And then down at the bottom, you just put down, I want to open it up in Photoshop 2023. When I export it, No, oh, yes. Uh, I forgot to do one one thing. Sorry. So, once again, it's telling me I got to choose where I want to go. So I'm just going to go to the desktop, choose it, export it, and there we go. So let me take this and let's open it up in Photoshop. 
Photoshop, where are you? I do have it open somewhere. There it goes. This thing is running really crazy. So let's take a look at this and let's look at some of the, the options that we, we can play with. So what I said before is, what I really like is uh, if you go to, for this one anyway, exposure, exposure seven. So we're in a third party plugin now. We're no longer in, we're going out of, well, when I say out of Photoshop, it's using another application. And what's, what's really nice about these applications are it takes longer. No. Um, so now we are in. Yeah, it's this computer is a little bit slow. So now I'm just going to reset it down in here, reset it. So it takes away whatever last filter I might've had on it. On, on this left-hand side, you'll see we have color, black and white. You can save your favorites if you have something you really, really like. Um, so these are all your presets like we'll see in, in many, many other uh, uh, third-party plugins. Um, I, I love I love in the um, color ones, I use a lot of the, the vintage and we can get down in here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going off topic, but I can't help it. Um, like Kodachrome, we you can come in here and it and it'll give you edges, it'll give you all kinds of stuff. There's so many things you can you can do with it. But since we're talking black and white, let's go up there. And from here, you have more choices in black and white. You can go from uh, different looks. You can go from normal black and white looks. And if I hover over it, you'll see the actual image starts to change. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, depending on what you pick. One of the things you have to be careful with, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. Some of these presets will have things in there that you may not want. It may throw in, let's say, grain, and you may not want it. So down on the right-hand side, you can always check off. So let's here's Delta ISO 32. We know that's going to have grain. So if I go on the right-hand side and open this up, you can see it's got grain in that image. So if you like the look of that 3200, you can just shut off grain and it'll be the same kind of look without the grain. So this is where you, you'll, you'll know how that works. So um, some of the other things I really like uh, besides regular black, the regular black and whites, and you can see their old name. They also have, if you're shooting <clears throat> Fuji, down at the bottom, they have uh, their uh, simulation, Fuji simulation. Um, so you can look at that as well and use use those. One of the other things I really like about uh, um, this this program is their um, vintage. It's really, really nice. So hey, you can also have different tonalities, blue, uh, brown, sepias, all these things in here that that, uh, like I said, you can go you can go berserk. And that's why I, I try to find the things that work best for me. I'll make a favorite of it and I can come back and just uh, again, you can go down this list and it's it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I like, um, I like the platinum it looks nice. Not, not, not with, uh, so let me go up to duo tones or, uh, split toning. So here you have all the different tones you want to play with. Uh, again, I like sometimes if I want to add slight little, uh, warmth to it, you can use these platinums. I really like this. This platinum is, is real nice. So just to show you a before and after, if I can, before and after but don't forget since i i went back in lightroom and saved it as a color image i still have all the good goodies that i could use like we did before so if i go into this color in uh, color part of the menu remember before i could still have control of all of those things so that's what really really makes it very very powerful um you can also come come down in here let me see if uh bring down Trying to get that bag on the bottom, if that ha has any color that I need. Let's see. Orange and and blues. There, so the blues will pop again, just like the jeans. So if you want to go further, then you can come down in here. If you like vignettes, you can come in here. What's nice about it, let's bring the vignette uh, down. I normally go really dark like this. This vignette lo uh, locator is cool. You just click on it and you can put it kind of anywhere you want. All right. So let's just put it 
uh, the light is coming somewhat from uh, a, little, a little bit behind him. So I don't have a problem just coming in here like that. And then I normally would take the softened uh, slider, slide it all the way over. And then from there, now I, I will come back on the on the outside edge. So you go from, you can do a light uh, vignette or you can go a little darker vignette. I'm looking at the histogram on the left. I still, I can see I got more room to work with, with whites. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to come up to basics. I'm going to pull uh, my whites up a little bit, look at my histogram. And that's giving me a little more contrast. Don't forget in, in, uh, in black and white, you can push it more than you can in color. You can get a, a, a higher um, gradation in, in tone, tonal value than you can in color because it likes it. Uh, in other words, I can bring, I would bring the blacks down a little bit. I keep coming. Jim, do you ever go to the histogram and drag there rather no, than? No, I, I don't, uh, but I, I, yes, you can. So you, uh, uh, Bruce was saying I could drag this histogram by just by an arrow, putting it over it. And uh, what, stop it, uh, deny. Um, yes, you can. I, I prefer to use the sliders. It's just, it's easier for me, but yes, you can. So once, once, let's just say I'm happy again and I apply it. I wouldn't stop here. Then we can start going into painting the image. And that's really where your images start to shine a little bit. <clears throat> uh, just give it a second or two. There we go. So let's say this is all good. Um, uh, because of uh, the file sizes, I'm just going to collapse this into one, one layer. Let me save it because we know what can happen. Okay, so that's saved. So from here, there's other things you can do. You can duplicate the file. You can drag it down here, duplicate it, or I use Commander Control J. I'm sorry, uh, Commander or Alt J. So now I have two copies. What I would normally do here is I would just take this copy on the top. You see it's normal blend mode here. I would put it to multiply and it looks really terrible. So then I would add a layer mask. I'm holding down the, uh, the alt or option key. And now my layer mask hasn't, is not used. So you can't, everything is back to where it was. If I shut this layer off, it looks exactly the same. What can we do with this layer now? On this mask itself, and you can see it's outlined. <coughs> Excuse me, it's outlined here. Just take a brush, let it be, and you don't want to use a black brush because your mask is already black. So just make sure you're white. You can see down in here, you can hit the letter X, and it'll become white. So I'm going to take a brush, and I'm going to again go to the extreme. And I have look, my little name is there. Let me get rid of that. Uh, then let's go with a regular brush. Okay, so now um, I'm using a brush left to right, uh, holding down the old option key and the control left to right makes it uh, um, bigger and smaller, up and down makes it softer and harder. I use this all the time because can you imagine every time I want to change something, I have to go up here and change the brush, forget it. I would never even be a photographer. So, so let's go to the extreme. I'm on a white brush. My opacity, I'm going to put at 100. You can see the opacity up there. If I take my brush, I am painting all that multiply uh, blend mode right on there. And obviously, we don't want to do that. But what we do want to do is start painting in areas so we can get some direction of light or more direction of light. So I'm just going to go like, let's say 20%. And just start brushing in some shadow areas. This is where we see them. You know, we may want to come down in here just like this maybe top here. And we're just painting in some areas, okay? I might even come in here. I'm gonna leave some of the areas brighter because I'm gonna come in there with a with a white one next. So I can start building up contrast by coming here and just kind of directing, again, light and shadows in here. So I'm just putting in shadows right now. Um, and we're just gonna make sure that where I'm going right now, is to lead your eye into this gentleman. So just, you don't have to be super careful. So let's, so that's before and after. So you can see I'm starting to add some, 
some dimension and uh, dimensionality. And that's what we're trying to do. So now that I have this, I'm just going to take this background. I'm going to duplicate it again. And instead of multiply, I'm going to go to screen. And now it's, that's my burn. That's going to be my, my dodging layer. The other one was my burn layer. This is going to be my dodging layer. So once again, I am going to put a mask on there. Oops, put a, uh, a mask on there. And I'm going to take the, a, a white brush again, 100%, just so you can see what's happening. There's my dodge layer. Okay, there's not a lot of magic to it. It's all about how much you want to get out of it. So I'm going to come in a little tighter. And now I'm going to start maybe 20%. You can always build it up and just start adding in some, some highlight areas, just like here, maybe down in this area here. Socks, of course, we would probably come into the mask a little bit. Or the bill, I like this. Just come in here, start painting some stuff in here. A little bit in the eyes, don't go crazy. I love what's happening on the knee. So you would highlight that as well. So you would just pick up what is already there. You know, if, you, if, we're, if we're doing a Nike commercial, I'd light up that Nike. I'm not going to do that. But what's really cool here, so I'm going to go to 100%. So you can see what's happening here. If I take that brush, I'm going 100% and click on one area. So you can see my brush on the left-hand side of the step. If I click here and hold down my shift key, it will do it straight across in one mm -hmm. shot. Okay. So if you're looking for areas like, uh, let me just get back. We don't, we don't want to do that. Um, history. So let's go back one. We don't want to do that, but something like, let's just say this, this pole here, I want to do something like the pole. I'm going to, again, just go a little crazy on it, but I'm going to hundred percent, make it a little bit smaller and just click. And then I would just click down in here and it already, and you can see the highlight there. It's a little bit too much. So I would go back and just use, you know, 30% come in here and just click again. So again, these are how I'm building dimensionality just by clicking. Uh, and holding the shift key. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So let me just add a couple more strokes. 30% uh, just come in here and just leading lines coming in here, just kind of doing my thing. Down in here, again, just painting with light on here. So here is the before and after. It's, and you can go as, as much as you want to go. That's really... Uh, your vision and how far you want to take it. But that's basically how I would start building uh, building my lights. Um, these, this is only one of the ways. There's so many ways. If I, I'm going to, again, I'm just going to collapse this, flatten it, save it. And I can take this image now and let's say I want to uh, bring up curves. I can do this. I, I bring up curves, right? And I can just turn my curves layer. Let me get this out of the way. And, my, and make curves layer multiply. So, and what's nice about it, I already, it already comes with a layer mask. So it's really doing that, you know, it's doing something very similar. If that's the way you want to go, by all means, you can do that too. You can do it with levels. I, right now, this has a layer mask. All I have to do is hit command and control, uh, uh, commander um, option Bye. I, and that would turn off that mask. And I'm back where I started. I take my brush. I'm going to do it at 100% so you can see what I'm doing. And now I got, again, another type of way I can burn this image. Many ways to get to the same point. All right. So let me, uh, any questions, any questions on that? Um, I know I'm moving really fast, but I, I wanted everybody just to get a chance to see some, uh, uh, the way I build up uh, the lighting pattern. And that's basically what I do on all my black and whites. Uh, some of them are going to take, how long do they take? Some people ask me, do you, you know what? If I find something that it's really an image that I love and, and how far I want to uh, take it, what am I going to do with it? I, I, I'm going to spend a couple of hours on it. Uh, you know, if it's something that I'm just going to uh, share up uh, or, you know, with family or put it up online, you know, I'll, I'll spend, uh, you know, 20 minutes with it. It really, it really depends. Okay. So let me, don't save that. Um, I got a few more minutes. Yeah. Okay. I know we got a 45 minute thing. I don't want to uh, bore you guys, but let's well, go back to life. Started late, Jim. So, you know, we'll go till eight and maybe some people have some questions. Can you okay. That, that's Can you fine. Okay. So uh, while I'm in Lightroom, so let's go <clears throat> to the grid view. 
letter G. This is where you can see all your all your cool stuff. Don't get me wrong. You could uh, you could take. Let me see. Uh, let's take this image. I don't have a lot of presets, although Lightroom does come with presets. You can see them right here. Um, so don't discard uh, Lightroom as being a, a place where you can have a good time. Um, these some of these are um, things that I bought years ago. I really don't use it uh, because of the reason I told you. Um, it's limited to what I want to do, but you can. So let's go into uh, I don't know. Let's find something that this uh, some of these presets will set for you. And after that you set them, then you can go into your menus and start and start changing them. So uh, let me see. So this one, I mean, doesn't look shabby. And once you once you get that preset in there, then you can come in here. You look at my histogram. It did a pretty nice job, but I'm falling short there. I could use more whites. So I'm going to pull my whites up. Kind of like that. A little add more contrast. I don't have a problem bringing, the shadow, uh, bringing my uh, blacks down just a little bit. Pulling my my shadows up a little bit. And what I'm looking for is that, look at a beautiful, uh, let me see if I can get this in a little bit. Got some beautiful blacks and don't forget, uh, and look at my histogram, the histogram is right on the money. Uh, it's okay to have blacks without detail sometimes. I'm not talking about your whole image where it's underexposed by nine stops and you know everything's black. But in reality, when uh, I'm getting a cramp in my leg, but I'll be okay. Um, in reality, uh, when we're outside looking at things, they do have, uh, there are areas that are black and it's okay. you got to just, you know, pick your poison. You can see this beautiful black line that's coming down. The building is, is gorgeous. And you can also have things that are lacking any detail in, in the whites. I would be more careful with that. Um, but if they're speculous, I mean, specular highlights have no detail in it. It's okay. So don't get, you know, too crushed up about it. You can also come in here. Down in here, there's clarity. If you want to, you know, boost your uh, clarity. Let me see if I can get a little closer. So I don't like to play with these too much because it, it really, to me, it just destroys it. And I would always use clarity and text, anything like that. I would always use that um, as a, se a separate part of my file. So uh, let me go to the extreme and you can see what, what's happening there. Um, I would use it as a separate uh, layer if I'm going out to print or whatever I'm doing, if I'm going out to a lab. But you can add a little, little punch that way. And mm. um, once again, maybe you find um, um, this already has a mask in it. I'm going to just add a, um, a gradient. If you think the, the left side's a little bit too bright, just grab your gradient. Okay. And just come down in here and pull down your highlights a little bit. Just like that. Maybe, you, you know, maybe you thought it was too bright. And I'm going to pull the exposure down just a wee bit. And don't forget, I'm going to add a mask. If you want to use a brush, you can come in here. Let's. I'm going to do it real crude. But you can add a brush stroke like that. And then let's say I want to add a little, little more highlight. I just pull it. Well, that's crazy. But you can pull it up just a little bit if you want to add that. And you can do the same thing with, with darkening. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do. Um. So that brings us to about eight o'clock. So uh, I'm I, I'm really proud of myself because normally I like I'm in trouble. So mm -hmm. any any questions on any any of the subjects uh, or top that we just spoke about? Anything, Jimmy, Jim? Yes. What building is that? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look. Uh, I don't even know if it's on this computer file. Let's see. If there's uh, I like the little the little pimple the, on the bottom, right? Let me look up my keywords, see if there's anything in there. Uh, keywords, keywords. It is, well, here you can see my keywords there, okay? Manhattan, uh, what camera I use, although you can find it out anyway. Um, I don't have it here, the exact uh, location, but, uh, okay. well, you can see when this was shot, 2019. Uh -huh. So this was just before COVID. Um, but it's a beautiful, it really is a beautiful building. Um, <laughs> and uh, I love, I love, I think I, uh, Andrew, I think you saw this. So here is a before and after on, uh, let me close this down, close this down and and go away. So here's a, a before and after. This one took a lot of work, 
but you know what? Again, it really depends on on uh, exactly what you want to get out of it. And this is all done basically the, the same way. I did add I did add a sky in this one uh, because I couldn't I couldn't retrieve all the information that I wanted. So <clears throat> when you if you think you're going to add a sky in, do the reverse. Make sure that sky is nice and bright. This way, it's going to be easy to pick. Um, uh, and Lightroom and Lightroom will do a pretty pretty nice job. You also notice how the building has straightened out because of um, trans transformation, the transforming that I used. You can see it's nice and plumb and a, and a, a nice and a nice crop as well. It's got an infrared feel with that black sky. Yeah, and it gives it a real dramatic feel. And then whoops, and then of course you want to start looking for. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can get this up. Uh, let's get out of that. Um, and let's go to that. Let's go back to where I let's go to this one. So I I actually added uh, crazy stuff, but the uh, the massing is a very important part of this uh, of making it uh, believable. You can see, I mean, this is you wouldn't you wouldn't think it was added in unless I shown you before and after. So uh, the, it does take a little time, but it's well worth the effort if um, you know if you're looking to expand your uh not only your black and white but your photography in general 